Whether you take your RV to an RV park, or a campground, or national forest, BLM, or just out for the weekends, there are some unwritten rules of the road that you might want to know so you're not the jerk. Hey bird watchers, it's Robin with Creativity RV. Today, I'm going to share with you some insight I got from my viewers on some social media pages and about a hundred forums, blogs, and articles that I researched to tell you what the top complaints are from RVers about other RVers. The number one complaint by far was don't be noisy. Now, RVs are not like houses. It's not like you're a lot away from another house where maybe there's a loud party. You're inside of an RV, your windows are probably open, you can hear everything on the outside, and they can hear you. Now here's a clip of a bunch of partiers that came in for the weekend in Sisters, Oregon, where I was camping on some national forest land. But people that come in for the weekend, I get it. They have a finite amount of time to fit in their partying and their drinking. But for those of us that are full time, it's like, yeah, I'm not out here to party. And you just pulled up literally next to my house and had a rave. Yay, people are leaving. Go home. Go home. The top complaints here were keep your music down. If you're out at night drinking by the campfire with your friends, keep your voices down. If you're gonna leave early in the morning, try not to make a lot of noise starting your engine, slamming your doors, or bringing up your gear. And don't honk. It makes people jump out of their skin. If you have a generator, and it's one of the kinds that you have to take out and put on the ground, maybe you don't want to turn that bad boy on so it's right next to your neighbor's window. You guys might have seen a video I did, I don't know, a couple years ago about Walmart where I had the worst neighbor. I was parked like this and these people came in and parked like this. They kept their headlights on into my window and then they ran their generator all night long. Like this jack wagon who's running his generator at 1130 at night in the Walmart parking lot. Oh my god, it is 7.15 in the morning and now these jack wagons are out using heavy machinery. These are the worst Walmart neighbors I've ever had. It was the summer and my windows were open and I thought, okay, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, it has to stop, right? Now some people said maybe they were running their generator so they could run a CPAP. No, no. They were running their generator so they could run their air conditioning. I could see it in their windows with the condensation. It was like... 67. They could have opened their windows instead of running their generator, which went right up into my windows. Yeah, it's Walmart, and it's free, and you don't have room to complain, but it is one of those things that give our veers a bad name and make your neighbors crazy. The second biggest complaint I found from the RV community is about people that don't keep their pets on a leash. I know you love your dog, and you want us to love your dog, that's cool. But like my friend Neil says from No Legs No Problem, you say your dog is friendly and I say, who cares? Your dog is jumping up on me and I don't know your dog. If you're in any place where there are people around, keep your dog on a leash. Recently, I was in an overflow campground on a lake in Colorado, which was so chill during the week. But on the weekends, other people would come including a family who pulled up into a camping space and didn't pay and they got a ticket. With their dog who was off leash, it would just run around and jump on people's kids and in their campgrounds and on the other dogs that were on a leash. If you're out in, let's say, a BLM spot and your dog is off leash and you're inside and the dog is running around, it could get hit by another car. When I'm going through BLM areas and I see dogs off leash, that is a constant worry for me. Or I feel like I have to look out for other people's dogs because you know, they could get attacked by an animal. I don't want to spend my time camping, keeping an eye out on your dog, unless it's a lost dog, and then I'm happy to help. But if I know you're over there and you just failed to put your dog on a leash, that's a fail as an RV neighbor. The other big complaint from RVers is that other RVers 
don't pick up after their dog and look. I know it's got to be tempting, right? You feel like you're out in nature and they're going to poop and that's nature, man. But don't be that dude that makes somebody else step in poop. The third biggest complaint from RVers is other RVers that don't pick up their trash. This honestly is a huge problem. Look at this sign that was circulating on Facebook. This is an area where they posted that this National Forest area, which is available for all of us to camp for free, which is how we do it, might be closed because people weren't picking up their trash. I know of a couple of other areas that have been closed because of that. We know that a lot of this might be because of people that are coming through on the weekends or they're partying or for other reasons. Usually it's not our community of full timers and most of the people that I know actually go through and pick up the trash like I do. When I was first on the road, I was in a national forest campground in Idaho, I think. And there were a few families there that knew each other. And after they left, I saw that they had left a bunch of trash. There was no camp host there. So I went out with a trash bag and started to pick up trash that I saw. And then two of their campsites had raw, open, fresh, unburned diapers in them. And I could not believe it. That was the first time that I ever saw anything that heinous. Sometimes there are car campers or tank campers that will leave their used toilet paper out or bottles of urine. And I put out a call on Facebook and one of my viewers actually shared this. That's right. Used toilet paper just scattered across the ground, which her dog ate and then he got it all over himself. So if you don't want to be a jerk, leave your spot better than you found it. If you can pack all that stuff in, you can pack it out and find a trash can. The next one is don't keep a bunch of lights on. This is actually a huge complaint from our viewers and I admit when I was new, I didn't know this. You know, you see those cool solar lanterns and little lights and you want to have the outside of your rig really well illuminated. Maybe keep your porch light on because it makes you feel safe. Here's the problem with that. Your light might be shining right into somebody else's eyes when they're trying to go to sleep. Or they might be wanting to see the stars and because your lights are bright, they can't see them. Or maybe you're projecting a movie on the outside of your rig cool, invite me if you're in the middle of nowhere. But if that's bouncing off your rig right into somebody else's eye when they're trying to sleep, that's not cool. And the other thing is, if you're near any other campers at all, if you're leaving your spot early in the morning, like when it's still dark, don't turn your brights on because that will shine right in somebody's eyes. The next biggest complaint RVers have about other RVers is people that trespass or intrude. Now there's a bunch we can talk about here, but the biggest peeve RVers have by far is people that cut through their campsite. I have to tell you guys, I didn't know this one. I was out boondocking with some people and I was sitting with a woman who got really upset with another woman who walked across her yard in her campsite to talk to us. Now, for a minute, I didn't understand why she was so upset. She explained it to me, and I'm glad she did. When you have an RV or a tent or a van, you have to imagine there's like a perimeter right outside your rig, like the lot lines around a house where people really shouldn't walk. Like this is my rig, and these are the lines around my campsite. Don't walk through there. Go around the outside. That's fine but don't cut across my yard to get to a friend or your campsite or to a trailer, even to my door. Because remember, RVers have their whole life right there. And if they see somebody right outside their window, it might creep them out. You should come around the outside of their rig and then go up to their door and then back off after you knock and wait. And that leads us to the next one, which is don't camp right next to somebody if there's room to camp somewhere else. Last year I was camping with Badge and Neil from No Legs No Problem and Wonderboom and some other people. And there was this weird guy that kept like circling around our group, just circling around. None of us knew him. And then 
he parked literally directly behind my rig. Now, I didn't see this, but there was a lot of space out there, lots of campsites, and it was like he was trying to kind of move in into our group, and Badge ran outside and said, too close, too close, and made it move. Well, later that night, we were sitting around the campfire, and that same guy was like circling around the campfire in the dark, and then like worked his way in, and finally came up behind us, and I'll tell you, there were a couple of Southern gentlemen in our campfire that told that guy to leave in only the way Southern gentlemen can, and he never came back. And don't steal somebody's site if it's already reserved. There are boondockers out there that are in vans or Class C's or Class A's. They don't have another car. So when they have to go into town to get water, dump their trash, get propane, whatever it is, usually they'll leave some camp chairs out. Some people leave a sign that says spot taken. Don't take that spot. That is a jerk move. Don't do it. It just leads to RV drama, and that's not why any of us are out here. Okay, the next thing that falls under intruding or trespassing is about RV social life. You gotta read the room, people. A lot of people that RV are friendly. When you go in, they'll wave, they make friends, but the way to do that is wait till people are outside, like at a campfire or outside walking around. If you're outside and you see them outside, strike up a conversation. But if you see an RV where the blinds are down and the door is shut, not just the screen, but the door, they probably don't wanna to talk to you. Another thing is if you're in an RV park or a campground, don't chat people up when they're hooking up their RV or unhooking because they're concentrating and they can make a mistake. And the last thing is don't steal my view. Now, there are people that may not steal your campsite, but let's say you found the perfect spot in Moab and there's just say a road down below, not even a campsite. Somebody will go down there and park on the road and obstruct your view. Here's actually a clip that I took when I was in Pismo Beach. If you've never gone there, it's rad. It does wreck your rig because of all the salt water. Just know that. But everybody camps in a row, right? Well, I was camped in a row like everybody else. And these people came late at night and actually tried to park in front of me. So they were obstructing my view of the ocean. And that didn't work out very well for them because they got stuck. I think it was pretty funny because not only did they get stuck, but they had to ask me for a tool to get unstuck. And then they went on their way. The next biggest complaint from RVers about other RVers is the ones that don't know how to dump their black tank. Look at this heinous picture. <laughs> this is from somebody that didn't hook up their hose correctly. It wasn't on there well. And then when they turned on their tanks, the stuff went everywhere. Don't be that guy. And also, don't leave your trash laying around the dump station. That is disgusting. Somebody has to pick that up. And in most dump stations, you'll see that big hose that kind of you can pull around. It's usually on a big pole. It's not drinkable water. That is there so you can spray out your hose and you can spray the area around you. So if you take off your hose and there's some little drippings there that are gross, spray it away before the next person gets there. And the last thing is, when you go to dump your tanks, be fast, be ready to go. I've had people ask me what I do with my hose, because it does get gross and you don't want to just put it in an outside cargo bin. I actually got a duffel bag where my hose fits right in the duffel bag, no big deal, I can grab it and dump my tanks. One of my personal biggest peeves is when I go to, let's say, a truck stop where there's a dump station and I pull up behind an RV that's using the only dump and they've gone inside to go shopping for 20 minutes. There's usually other RVers that wanna go behind you. Just be quick, get out of the way and then go fill up your gas tanks and do your shopping. The next biggest complaint from RVers is about jerk drivers. Think about this. RVers that camp, let's say in national forest land or on BLM land, are outside and they have their windows open. And if they have a fan in their ceiling, that fan pulls the air through the windows and up out the fan. But if somebody goes by really fast and there's a cloud of dust, 
that dust literally gets sucked into the RV. Now, some RVers do this, but a lot of times it's the ATVers or people that are just in trucks or cars. So if you're listening, know that you're kicking up dirt that's going right inside of our houses. Most RVers I know go about five or 10 miles an hour when they're going past other people that are camping, trying to kick up the least amount of dirt possible. Like if I see people outside in their chairs, especially in a dusty area, I go really slow. Like so slow I'm like driving Miss Daisy then I give them a little wave, right? I don't want any dust to get up in their iced tea and I don't want any dust to go up into their windows. Another thing is don't block somebody's exit or entrance or their camping site. I got this pic from a follower on Facebook. This was her actual campsite that she paid for. And then one of her neighbors had a guest or somebody that came in late at night and literally parked in her spot. Now they parked to the side so she could still get out, but it still was a jerk move. And finally, I'll tell you guys this story if you didn't hear about it. They came from the Tiffin campground last year. Customers of Tiffin can have their work done in Alabama at their shop and right adjacent to that is a campground. Last year apparently there was a big fight between a lady and her husband and the story varies on who did what when, but in the end, this drunk RVer in the Tiffin campground drove their giant Class A through a bay door of the shop directly into the grill of another brand new Tiffin. She was arrested for DUI, she was charged, and that other Tiffin was completely destroyed. It was totaled out because their transmission dropped out onto the ground. If you're a full-timer and any of these things are one of your peeves, I know you're out there singing hallelujah, but if you're a weekender or a new RVer, I hope this helped you learn some of the rules of the road so you can enjoy your travels and avoid RV drama. I hope you're all doing well out there, and I'll see you next Sunday. Until then, everybody have happy travels and be free.